Satellite altimetry and its applications. The satellite altimetry era began in the late 1970s. The mid-1990s saw the launch of the European Space Agency's ENVISAT. This satellite was launched with the intention of monitoring climate. Data collected by ENVISAT contributed massively to the field of Earth sciences. Cryosat-2 is another ESA satellite, this one being specifically dedicated to polar observation. And JSON-3 is a collaborative project which produces highly precise altimeter measurements. So how do radar altimeters measure height? Satellites like Cryosat-2 use radar to send out pulses of high frequency electromagnetic radio waves towards the surface of the Earth. The time it takes for these to be returned can be converted into a height or distance called the range. This is equal to speed multiplied by time divided by 2 given its two-way travel time. The radio waves hit the surface in a circular shape called a footprint. In a flat homogeneous area like the open ocean, these are then returned as a waveform in the order they hit the ground, i.e. the leading edge first. When a footprint hits a heterogeneous surface, for example a rough ocean or coastal area, the leading edge of the footprint hits the surface in accordance with the height of the surface. For example, over rough oceans, some of the signal would return from the peaks and some from the troughs of ocean waves. Given this, the return signal would look different to that of a homogeneous ocean surface. What can we learn about the surface below from the return signal? As previously explained, the leading edge of an echo is the point of first contact with the surface below. In a plot of wave power against time, the return pulse from the leading edge can be seen as a rise in wave power. The slope of the leading edge can tell us a lot about the roughness of the surface below. As you can see on this plot, a steeper gradient is indicative of a smoother surface and a shallower gradient corresponds to a rougher surface as the rise in returning wave power is more gradual than over a homogeneous surface. The trailing edge can be seen on a power time plot as a decrease in power. This is related to penetration of the surface below. There is a slow tailing off when the pulse penetrates the surface material, so there is additional scatter from depth within the surface. The trailing edge tails off more rapidly when there's no penetration, i.e. the trailing edge is representative of the surface only. This can also tell us about the material properties of the surface below, like are we over land or ocean? So what can we measure using altimetry? One of the things we can measure is sea surface height. This is measured with reference to a surface called the ellipsoid. It does not consider the natural undulations of the Earth, but rather is a rough ellipsoidal approximation of the Earth. The height of the satellite relative to this ellipsoid is calculated from GPS and is known within an area of 3 cm. Given this, the distance from the satellite to the ellipsoid minus the distance from the satellite to the ocean is equal to the sea surface height. So we know that the surface of the Earth is not actually a perfect ellipsoid. Instead, it has an undulating surface due to isostatic gravity anomalies called the geoid. If the sea surface was not subjected to any forces, the geoid would be well approximated by the mean sea surface height. But in reality, the top layer of the ocean is subjected to several forces, including a horizontal pressure gradient force, the Coriolis acceleration and friction from the surface wind. The sum of these forces results in an ocean topography, ETA. This refers to the distance from the geoid to the sea surface. Eta can be derived from the distance to the satellite to the geoid, minus the distance from the satellite to the ocean surface. Sea ice thickness can also be measured using radar altimetry to get an ice freeboard measurement. Our reference level, or sea surface height, is measured from leads, which are essentially large fractures in the sea ice which expose the open water. The difference between the sea surface height and the ice surface height gives us an ice freeboard measurement. But we need to consider the snow freeboard, so corrections may need to be applied depending on the amount of radar penetration through the snow. If we assume hydrostatic equilibrium, the sea ice thickness can be measured using estimates of ice and water density. And what can we learn from these measurements? Altimetry allows for quick remote data collection of variables such as sea surface height, dynamic topography, and many more. 
These measurements allow scientists to monitor changes in climate. This includes ocean dynamics, such as changes in ocean circulation, to variables such as sea ice thickness. The long-term reliable data sets that have been built up from the altimetry era now allow scientists to forecast the impact that anthropogenic induced climate change will have on our oceans in the years to come.